In this video, I want to show you how I created my daily briefing. And we're going to talk about how to make your notifications sound more organic using macros. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. If you saw my video on how I added Jarvis to Home Assistant, you would have already gotten a look at my daily briefing. The idea for this particular notification came from trying to recreate those news flashes on the Amazon Echo, but using data sourced from Home Assistant. It all started as just a weather update, but it didn't take long for me to want to add more information to that notification. And my first attempt at an automation to handle this looked like this. A simple automation with a series of service calls to my text-to-speech integration for each bit of information I wanted to include. And to keep them from trying to run on top of each other, I added delays between each section. Getting the timing down was tough because there would often be pauses between each section because I didn't know how long it would take for the text-to-speech integration to read the text, so it resulted in dead air. So I decided to take something I had seen in other people's configuration and use a macro, which is essentially a function if you're familiar with programming, and it could be stored in its own file, making updating it easier. But before we get into how to create that single purpose file, let's take a look at the automation. In my good morning briefing automation, my trigger is when the kitchen occupancy sensor switches on. I have two conditions that get checked after that. First, we make sure that the time is between 6.45 and 8.30 a.m. This is to ensure that this automation gets triggered in the morning, when we're typically entering the kitchen for the first time. Any other instances of this briefing are triggered by voice command. And the next condition is that this input boolean is off. This is what I'm using as a poor man's rate limiter to ensure that this automation only fires once a day. There are other ways to do this, but I just went with simple. For actions, I have three. The first one is to fire the script morning briefing. This script kicks off the actual daily briefing, and I'll show you how that works in just a minute. The next action tweets out a notification that this automation or notification went off because I'm a nerd. And lastly, we turn on that input boolean rate limiter I referenced in the conditions so we don't do this automation again. What you don't see in all of this is that part of the nightly automations that run each day is to turn off this rate limiter input boolean so that tomorrow we can do this all over again. Okay, let's take a look at that morning briefing script. It's pretty basic, and honestly, this could have been done in the automation, but I used a script so that I could trigger it with a voice command on the Echo as well. I would need this script if I wanted a custom voice command on the Echo, so why not just use it with the automation? The sequence just calls my speech engine script, which handles my text-to-speech stuff, without me having to know what service I'm using underneath. In the data, I pass the location of where I want the message to play. For this one, it's always kitchen, but in most cases, the location is sourced from my room presence sensor. And for message, I use this include. The include works just like the include you might see in your configuration.yaml, and it simply replaces the message contents with whatever is in this file. This path is relative to the location of the file your automation definition is in. So in this case, this automation is in my packages folder, the two dots tell Home Assistant to back out of the packages directory, then head to the template folder, speech, and then dailybriefing.yaml. Now, this is where things get a bit advanced and, quite frankly, venture into programming territory. But the whole purpose of creating this macro in its own file is so that I could build a briefing using different sources in Home Assistant and then pass all of that to my text-to-speech integration as a single piece of information. And for those that might want to use some of what I've already done in their configuration, there's a link to a page on my website where I've posted all of the code that we're about to walk through so that you can copy and paste it. For this video though, I'm going to use the template panel over in Developer Tools so I can walk you through this code piece by piece. First, let's talk about the basic framework. It looks like this. The first line is simply a comment that I use as a title to help me remember where I'm at. The next section is our first macro or function. The way this macro works is like this. Anything we type between the macro get greeting and end macro is what will be in this macro. For example, we could put in here, I am sorry, I cannot do that, Dave. Then when you call the macro like this, it will print out the value that we've put in that macro. But you could also have more than one macro. So maybe you want to include door status. We could add a macro called get door status. 
The name of these macros could be whatever you want, but since they function like functions, that's how I typically name them. In this one for door status though, we could put the pod bay doors are closed. Then just add a line to print that under the other one. This allows us to have a macro for each part of this briefing to help break it up and make it easier to edit in the future. But this is a smart home, right? So static information like this just isn't going to do. For greeting, let's use something that changes in real time, like this. This bit of logic takes the current time and prints the right greeting. Maybe we want to have the time and date announced, so we could just add this bit. This logic checks my morning time of day sensor. It gives me the entire date, and if it's not, it gives me the time. As you can see, this is where we really get into making this briefing powerful. Because we could build one briefing that contains data for different situations during the day, and then use sensors from our smart home to help shape the briefing in real time. One briefing to rule them all. Anyway, the way this prints out is formatted weird with white space, and it bugs me. So I use some other functions to help clean them up. I borrowed this from another repo I found on GitHub as well. If I find the source, I'll include it in the description. This first function or macro is called cleanup, and it's meant to remove any newline characters and spaces just to format things better. This next function is used to pull all of the macros you use above and put them in a single entity. Last is we call the cleanup macro and pass it the mother of all macros, which should contain all of the text from our different parts. Then our text looks better. And that is the basic idea. So as you can imagine, you can get pretty crazy with this briefing and you don't have to have separate macros for each part. In just a minute, I'll show you my actual briefing file and you'll see that I just use one macro. But whether you use one macro or multiple, I would choose the method that will make it easier for you to maintain because I suspect you're going to be tweaking this one a lot. And speaking of tweaking, I tend to use that template panel in the developer tools when I'm trying to flesh out one of these briefings or notifications. It's just not very good at helping troubleshoot when things go wrong. In those cases, I find it easier just to start removing all of the pieces I've recently added and adding them back in one at a time until I find the one that is breaking my setup. Okay, once you're happy with your setup in the template panel, you can just copy all of this and drop it in a new YAML file. In my config, you'll find that I have a folder called templates and it contains files for both Twitter and for my speech notifications. Really the purpose here is because these typically have more decision logic in the message and just to keep things clean and easier, to find if I wanted to update them, I decided to separate them from the herd. Now, hopefully that include we looked at in the automation makes a little more sense. And you can see how messy things could get if we tried to cram all of this into the actual automation. But now that we've talked about the basics behind this briefing, I wanna show you the one that's running in my production system. Good morning. Today is Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. The weather in Grayson is 32 degrees with sun. The current forecast says we should expect sunny with a high near 52. North wind around five miles per hour. And based on the forecasted low, it will be near or below freezing. Like the turn water solid kind of cold. Do not leave the lemon tree out to die. You have nine hours until the sun slips below the horizon. Overnight, there was no motion detected at the front door. You have some things on the calendar. Today is also known as National Green Juice Day. Unfortunately, this thing is hard to follow because it was built over a long period of time. And instead of formatting it from the beginning, I just added on. Like I said before, it started with a weather update and then things slowly got added. I'll leave a link in the description to it on GitHub if you wanna look through the whole file. What you'll notice in this version is I have just one macro called get report. Everything else in here is handled by if else statements and you'll see a lot of those. One of the sections I like is this one that reports either how long until the sun comes up if this daily briefing is triggered while the sun is below the horizon or how long until sunset if the sun is up. I have a section for weekly chores that happen on specific days like trash reminders, holiday and birthday countdowns, and I even have a section for national holidays. The national holiday information gets sourced from a Google calendar and I added some random snark in here if certain terms are found in the holiday name. Another useful section is one that tells us what is on the school lunch menu. This one is sourced from a file that I host at GitHub, and unfortunately my school district doesn't have an API, so I have to manually update it. 
I also have a Google Calendar that contains all of the school holidays, so we get reminded of those, especially when the pickup time changes for early release. And of course, if we forget to move the laundry before going to bed, we get a nice reminder first thing in the morning that it's been sitting there for at least eight hours. Again, this isn't real easy to follow, but if you want to take any of this, it's on my GitHub. And if you want to know how any of the specifics work in this briefing, let me know in the comments or in the Slacker Labs Discord, which is live now. You'll find a link to it in the description. All I ask is that if you're trying to ask me specific questions, you just have some patience because the family and the day job come first. I've tried to set up the Discord so that it can scale as Slacker Labs grows. So that means there may be changes in the future. But I finally wanted to get a place where we could have more technical discussions and share code snippets. And that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I'm also thinking of doing a more Jinja focused video where I get into the programming aspects of Jinja like if else statements. So if that's something of interest to you, let me know in the comments as well. I hate that so much of this is still programming heavy, but the good news is you don't have to be an expert and with a few basics, you can do some really advanced stuff. Anyway, if you're interested in supporting Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find a link to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store in the description of this video. Or let me know you found value in this video by hitting that like button. And consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart harm content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. Thank you.